Um, welcome back to another budget gem or budget bust uh, unboxing an amp dyno. Got another one here for you today. Um, I know I've had some people online asking about these because um, Orion is a pretty good brand out there right now. Um, the XDR seem to be really the talk of the industry for how much power that you're paying or how much power you're getting on these amplifiers. Um, I've had two Orion, or actually three, four. <laughs> I've technically owned four Orion XTRs um, here recently. I've currently got in my truck right now, I've got an XTR 2500.1 DZ paired with a XTR 1000.4 four channel. Um, and that thing puts out ridiculous power. Um, prior to that, I had an XTR 1500.1D and that I thought was tremendous. Um, that one dynamically, I put out almost 2200 watts on the dyno, uh, so that was amazing, um, especially for how much these amps are. And you know, the 1000.4 sounds really good to me, so great. Uh, I also had a 1000.1D, and that one was also a pretty good amp. Um, so, a lot of people are asking, does that trickle down to the Cobalts? Um, Cobalt has always been the budget line for Orion going back to the old school days, um, and that's still the way it is today. This amplifier here is about 120 bucks shipped currently on Amazon. I picked it up a little bit more, because again, I'm always budget shopping. I actually picked it up for $95 as an open box uh, from Amazon as well. It said it was complete, good shape, everything else. Um, it's even inspected. So we're going to check it out here. We're going to see how this amp performs and what you're going to get in the box on one of these. So let's open her up. Let's find out what is in the box. Um, First thing you get, you get your owner's manual for all the Cobalt series amplifiers and in a giant sized, uh, comparatively speaking to what you get in the XGRs, an, a red Orion sticker. Um, that might be a little bit too much of a, uh, a welcoming wagon for potential thieves, so I wouldn't really put that on there. Not exactly discreet, Orion. Um, you get here, you get your base knob and remote cable. Um, these are exactly the same that you'll find in the XTRs, which is, these are cheap. Um, it, it's probably one of my biggest complaints about in the XTR, they go with a really cheap base knob. But, I mean, for those of you experienced, you might not even really use this ever. Um, you got a couple of mounting screws, and of course the amplifier itself. go. So, first initial thoughts on this amplifier pulling out of the box. Um, this is bigger, at least lengthwise, than a lot of the XTRs I've already gone through. So this is not going to share a board with any of the XTRs. Um, this is longer than I think an XTR 1500.1D. Certainly a lot longer than an XTR 1000.1D. Um, pretty light, so it's, it's definitely not a heavy amp. Um, over on this side, you know, you have your regular standard connections. You've got your four gauge power inputs here. A really oversized remote um, input. You have four 30 amp fuses, so you have 120 amps of fusing. So. It's got enough fusing to get to the 1250 watt rating, so hopefully we get that. And these look to be about eight gauge speaker terminals. Over on this side, uh, you can see it is a strappable amp. Um, here are the outputs if you're gonna bridge the amplifier with another 2500.1D. Um, I am not seeing a master or slave output. So that could be interesting. 
I guess you'd have to read the directions on how you strap these. Um, you have your remote input, your base boost, low pass filter, all typical standard stuff. You have your phase adjustment. Probably the biggest complaint on all Orion amplifiers, at least in the XTRs, has been the subsonic filter is just off or on. It's set to 25 hertz. Um, unless you're really playing test tones, you may not ever really need anything um, higher than a 25 hertz uh, subsonic filter. You should be safe if you're in like the mid 30s for tuning on a ported box. Of course, if you have a sealed box, you don't need it at all. But on a ported box, I mean, unless you're tuning at 46 hertz and you're competing, you know, blasting tones at 50, 60 hertz, you might not need this um, any higher, but it is something that people complain about. Um, you have a remote gain, line inputs, and outputs. So if you do need to daisy chain other amplifiers, you can do that. And of course, your power and ground. Um, these amps are not like the XTRs, which are made in Korea. Um, this actually didn't say anywhere on the box where it came from. I am going to assume China. Um, based on the price, everything else, you're not gonna find a Korean build house like Zenon or any of these others that are gonna build this for that price. Um, you know, we're gonna find out what kind of power it does. Oh, oh, one other thing, this is an LED on top of here, so this will, the whole logo won't glow, but around the logo will glow. So that's kind of cool bling factor that you're gonna find on these amplifiers. So there's nothing else to do now, but strap it up to the dyno and find out, is this really a budget gem or is it a bust? Does it put out 1250 watts? Does it meet its CEA ratings? We're gonna find out right now for you and we're gonna see what we got. here on the Orion Cobalt CB2500.1D. Um, as you saw in the tests, um, we did make rated power at any ohm load. Um, got short on every single one. Um, bottom line, this is not a 1250 watt amplifier. Um, you could call it between 900 to a thousand watts um, for what it'll do certified and uncertified dynamically we got 1135 so the question is as always is this amplifier a budget gem or a budget bust well it's 120 bucks and you're gonna get roughly a thousand watts um, I'm gonna call it 
<laughs> I would say just straight up budget amp. You know, I don't want to call it a gem because it's not um, way over what you're paying for it. Um, the components inside look fairly cheap. It, it's not impressive as a circuit board. Um, it does make power, yes. Um, but it's not a budget bust because it's not like um, a Planet Audio or a Boss where you're paying for 1200 watts and you get 200 watts. Um, this, okay, so you paid for 1250 watts and the most you could claim you really are getting are, is 1135. So, slightly overrated, but these bad boys are 120 bucks brand new. So, um, for 120 bucks, yeah, it's a decent value. Um, if you want to spend a little bit more, like I said, I, I really think at 160 bucks, where you can pick up like that PPI P1000D, I mean, I think that's a better amplifier than these. Um, occasionally, you can find the Soundstream TN1 1200D. Um, I think those are better built than these. I think they're better amps straight up than this amplifier. Um, but, you know, those are kind of at the moment deals. You know, like right now, the Soundstream, I can't find it for under $200. Um, and the, the PPI, though, you can still find for $159. So I'd rather spend the extra 40 bucks, get the PPI, but you might not have that option. You might only have 120 bucks to spend. And if you've got 120 bucks to spend, you want a thousand watt amplifier, go for this one. Um, it's a little, like I said, it's, it's not an impressive amp. Um, I really wish it had made its ratings, but it wasn't super far off, so. You're not getting a, a true CEA rated amp, so I, I, I am disappointed in Orion that. Orion, boo to you for lying to us and saying it's a CEA and it does all these different ratings when it doesn't. Uh, I don't really see why Orion wants to do that. It's, you know, you get such a tr tremendous value in their XTR series and their HCCA series are top notch. So. I don't know why they have to waste their time by putting out amplifiers like this that are um, lying to us and what they actually do. Um, this would be a tremendous value if they just said it was what it was. This is a thousand watt amplifier. If they put, hey, you get a thousand watts, it's 120 bucks. Rock on, man. The, the, great, good job. Um, I, it just it just happens like you know this is the thing when you're in these budget amps and this is why I test these these amps for you people out there is that. You know, we got to find out what these amps really do so you're not getting ripped off. Um, you got to know what you are actually getting when you're going to drop your money. Because, uh, you know what, I know what it's like to not have a lot of cash on hand and you're trying to, you know, better your car by having better audio in there. And, you know, a $120 mistake for me right now in my current situation is no big deal. Um, 120 bucks for some of you out there, um, that's a very big deal. And it's disappointing to me when these manufacturers are taking advantage of people at these price points that really can't afford that mistake. So I'm gonna keep testing these amps for you folks so you know what you're really getting. And um, this isn't my last, there's more to come. And uh, we're gonna keep trying to find these values for you people, so. Enough for me for today, I'm going to go test some more amps.